Hello and welcome to this second film in the Year 12 review of solubility. It's about ion dipole forces and it aims to explain why ionic substances are so soluble in water. Okay, um, it would be great if by the end of this film you could draw ion dipole forces, so that is to draw a diagram to show them forming and try and use your diagram to explain why an ionic substance ought to be so soluble in water. Um, really and truly, I suppose, part of this film is just to kind of get you into the habit of doing solubility explanations correctly, but it's also to introduce this new type of force, which you may not have covered in the bonding topic. Some people do look into it when they study the bonding topic, but it's not an essential part of it. So here we go anyway. Here's a diagram which I've not drawn myself, but cut and pasted. Um, I really thought it was going to be too hard to draw something quite as good as this, but um, anyway, um, it's supposed to be showing sodium chloride dissolved in water. What we ought to try and do when we're drawing one of these diagrams is not only to um, try and make sure that the molecules are pointing the right way, but also to show the dipoles on the molecules. Now remember, ions don't have dipoles. Dipoles are uneven distributions of charge. So if you remember in a water molecule, there's a slightly positive end and there's a slightly negative end. Okay, because of the electronegativity difference between oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, so every oxygen will be slightly negative and every hydrogen will be slightly positive. Okay, I'm not going to draw all of these in now, but just to show a couple. If you're actually drawing a diagram like this, there's no need to draw quite so many molecules. But what this is showing is that a chloride ion, when it's in solution, is, um, forms ion dipole forces with the water. Here's the ion and here's a dipole from the water. And because this attraction can be quite strong, it can make up for the fact that we've broken some quite strong forces between the solute and the solvent in making our solution. Likewise, all the sodium ions can get surrounded by water molecules, but the negative ends of the water molecules are attracted to the sodium ions. And so we've got another ion dipole force, okay? But if you're actually drawing a diagram, unless you show these partial charges, it's not really clear that there is a dipole, okay? So anyway, moving on, and just trying to get one of those solubility explanations going again here. Okay, we're going to try and identify the forces broken and the forces made. We're looking again at this diagram of barium chloride dissolving in water. What are the solvent solvent forces? Well, they're between water molecules, so they're H bonds and they're dispersion forces. Okay. The solute solute forces, well, they are ionic bonds, aren't they? Because we've got an ionic lattice here. And we should spot almost straight away that these are very strong, and so are hydrogen bonds. They're not nearly as strong as ionic bonds, but we've got some very strong forces to break there. And then what solvent solute forces do we make? Well, that's precisely these ion dipole forces. So how do we explain that barium chloride or lots of other ionic substances are very soluble in water? Not without exception, but most well, we can say that the ion dipole forces that are formed between the ions and the water molecules are strong enough to make up for the fact that we've broken strong ionic bonds in the solute and st quite strong hydrogen bonds in between solvent particles. Okay, So once again, it's that systematic sort of explanation saying what forces we've made, what forces we've broken, actually being precise about that and making a comparison between the two. Okay, so that hopefully explains a little bit why things with very strong bonds can actually dissolve. Okay, um, we've now kind of reached the end of the Year 12 review of solubility and hopefully you understand a bit about ion dipole forces if you haven't yet covered them in the bonding topic and some people won't have done. Um, good place to go next, because we're starting the solutions and reactions topic, is to watch the five films about solutions which are largely, they should be a review of Year 11 material, but very important to watch as you set out on this topic, just to make sure that you're sh uh, you are able to do all the things from Year 11 that you'll rely on in Year 12.